everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I am so grateful and thankful to Pat Sloan to be here today. I was just tickled when she asked me to be part of her book tour for holiday celebrations. If you're new to my channel, my name is Becky Thompson and I have been on YouTube now for a little over two years and I specialize in quilting and machine embroidery and just bringing the new things to you that are out on the market and sharing all the fun stuff with you that I make in my, in my studio here. And when Pat asked me to be part of her book tour, I immediately jumped on some cute applique projects that this book has. It is full of adorable applique projects. One of the things I really like to do is to use all of the technology that is out there for stitchers today. There is so much that we can do with software and the machines that are available to us. It's just amazing. I've got a Brother Luminaire here behind me and I love to use Design Center to take advantage of all the stitches that are available in that. And then I also love to play with a software that's called Simply Applique. And that is a module that is inside of the BES4 embroidery software. This software is so fun to do. It allows you to essentially automate the applique process because my stitching skills when it comes to stitching on applique, they leave a little bit to be desired. But when you use Simply Applique, it just takes away all of the, the stitch, stitch, stop, turn, stitch, all of that. The manual sewing machine stitching of applique is where a lot of the time comes in. But I like to front load that extra time and do it in the software to automate the process. So for Pat's projects, I chose the Bunny Hop Pillow. This is with some adorable fabric called Hippity Hoppity from Benertex. And I just had so much fun making this. It turned out so cute. The back of it is a green gingham. And I just loved it. And you can tell on the applique here how precise the stitching is. It turned out just beautiful. The other projects that I made were the treat totes. And these were so cute. They are super simple to make. They are very straightforward. You get a fully lined tote and it's got some handles on it. And I chose some fabric called A Haunting We Will Glow. And this fabric glows in the dark. It is so cute. But again, I use Simply Applique to stitch on all of the applique. It creates a placement stitch, a tack down stitch, and a final blanket or satin or motif stitch. I like to use the blanket stitch when I do applique projects. And I did the same thing here with the jack-o'-lantern. These were so fun and they were so easy. And if you follow my channel at all, you know I like easy. So what follows in the rest of this video is the process I go through once I make a copy of the design itself. These are the patterns that are included in the book. Look how simple they are. And I scan them into the Brother Scan and Cut, and then the Scan and Cut creates a couple of files that are used to make the cut files that cut out all of the applique pieces. I don't have to use scissors to do that. And then it also creates a file that is used by Simply Applique in order to create the embroidery file to put it all together. And then I also have another video that is linked on my blog where I used the Design Center in the Brother Luminaire to quilt on the tote all around the applique, but not stitch on the applique itself. It's really a lot of fun. I thank you again for joining me. I hope you subscribe. We do a lot of fun things on this channel. I have a lot of giveaways. And if you would set your calendars, you can see me use the Luminaire Design Center on All Brands Live on July 8th at 3.30 p.m. Central. That's gonna be really cute. And I'm gonna show how to use the Design Center to quilt up Pat's candy bucket 
that's also from the Holiday Celebrations book. If you are interested in winning a copy of this book for yourself, please leave a comment below that says, I'd like to win Pat's book. You need to do that by June 13th, 5 p.m. Central, and I will choose a winner using the YouTube comment picker. So thank you again so much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. Now that I've scanned in the background uh, behind the rabbit, I uploaded it to the Brother Canvas wirelessly from the Scan and Cut. And now I'm going to go to canvasworkspace.brother.com. This is free to use. Even if you do not have a Scan and Cut, you could find it very helpful. I'm going to log in. You will need to create an account. And when I get here, there are several tabs across the top. So I'm going to my projects and if you look, so here is the page with the rabbit and the leaves and the flower. And here is the background and there are two buttons on here. This is edit this project and this is to download it. Well, right now I wanna edit it. What we see here is the outline of the background and then here is the edge of the paper. And because when we saved it, we saved outline only. So it didn't pick up all of that little text and, and the line that was in here in the middle. I'm just going to grab the, uh, the background. I'm going to move it. And this is the part I want to keep. So I'm moving it off the mat. And then what I normally do is I start up here in the corner and hold my cursor down and my mouse key and just drag it and let go and that way I make sure to collect any other extraneous anything that might be on the mat and I'm just going to hit delete with my keyboard. Now I'm just going to grab the background and I'm going to bring it right back over and I have fabric on the mat that is backed with heat and bond and it is face down on the mat right now. I'm finished with this. I don't have to do anything to it. I will caution you, do not change the size. Once you do the download for the cut file, you want to maintain the same size for the download for the FCM file. And what I mean by that is when you click download, the canvas creates two different files. This is an FCM file, file compression format. And this is the file that will be used by Simply Applique to create an embroidery file, the Applique embroidery file. You have Scan and Cut Transfer, and this will create the cut file. I'm going to click this one now, and it says Scan and Cut Transfer is ready. So from here, I could go over to the Scan and Cut, open up, the design and it would be ready to cut and it will cut out that whole background piece in less than a minute. So I'm going to close this. Now I want to download the FCM file so I can turn that into an embroidery file. I'm going to click download again and now I'm going to click this one. When I click that, it's going to jump right into my downloads and it's saved as 70.fcm. I'm just going to click here and now I can go into my folder. When I click on downloads, I'm going to right click, open in a new window. And here is that FCM file and you can actually see what it is because, let me get a little bit larger icon. You can actually see what that is because I have a brilliant thumbnailer on my system. It's a utility that allows you to see SVG files. SVG and all of your embroidery files can be seen using Thumbnailer. It's a very, very handy tool. It's very cool. So I want to move this over to Bunny Pillow. So I'm just going to grab a hold of it with my mouse and I'm going to drag it over to this other window that I have already open for Bunny Pillow. And now when I double click that, there it is. I'm going to be able to use this file. Let me right click, I'm going to rename it, and I'm going to call it background. Okay, and now 
I will be able to use that when I am ready to make the embroidery file. I still need to do editing and download for the bunny. This software is Pacesetter's BES4 Dream Edition, and it does a lot more than what I need it to do. There is a less expensive software that will do what I'm about to show you. It is called Simply Applique, and Simply Applique is made by the same company, and it is a module that is inside of this BES4 Dream Edition. If you get Simply Applique, you're going to be able to do what I'm about to show you. What I want to do is just set this up. It is so incredibly simple. It, it will just blow your mind. I'm going to click on the icon up here, the B for BES4, and I'm going to import FCM. And it's not in my downloads. I need to find it. Documents and embroidery. And I think I have a folder called Pat Sloan. There it is and the bunny pillow, and I want the background. I'm gonna open it. I'm gonna rotate it just a little bit. Okay, there, that's how we need it on the pillow. And then I want to bring in the other file. I'm gonna go File, Import FCM. I'm gonna get the flower and open. Click off of this. I'm gonna move these so that they look right. Let's see. Yeah, it did. It, it found both of them here. I'm going to hit delete on this one. And let me grab this one here and hit delete on that one. These cameras today sure can see stuff that the human eye doesn't. Isn't that amazing? I click that one. I only need one of all of these. Okay. Whoop. And I'll just hit delete on that. Okay. And then I need to bring in the bunny. Oh, you can't draw a uh, drag and drop. I'm going to need to import FCM. It won't allow you to drag and drop. Okay. Does the bunny have more than one? He does. I'm going to highlight that one and hit delete. Whoop. Control Z. That is a computer person's friend. Oh, it wants to stay as one. Okay, so I'm going to highlight all of this. And you want to make sure that everything here is highlighted. And I'm going to come up to the top and hit Arrange. And I want to flip and flip horizontal. There we go. Now everything has been flipped around, so it's going to match exactly the way the fabric is cut. The first thing that needs to go down is the artwork, so that's going to stay right here. I'm going to rename it, and you just right-click. I hit Rename, and I'm going to call it Background. All right, and then the next thing that needs to go down is the bunny, and I like the bunny the way he is. And then the next thing that needs to go down are the leaves. I'm going to grab this one. Let me move the bunny's ribbon out of the way. And I'm going to grab a leaf and set it right here. And then I'm going to grab this leaf and rotate it and set it right here. Let's get them centered. This is the center line right here. If you look here, this is going to be a stitching order, and this comes in arbitrarily. You never know how it's going to be. So you, if you want to move it, first of all, I'm going to right-click, rename, and bunny. And if you want to move it, grab the picture and drag it up and hover it over the one you want it to be after. So now Bunny is after the background. And then here is a leaf. And I want this to be after the Bunny. I'm going to rename. And I'm going to call it Left Leaf. And then I'm going to grab this one. 
and I'm going to drag it up after, set it on top of left leaf so that it shows up afterwards, rename, right leaf, then I want the flower to stitch, let me turn that, and I want it right there, that looks really good, I'm going to rename it, that's a right click, and then I want to do the center of the flower on top of that, right there, I think that'll look okay, and I'm going to drag it up, hover it over flower so it shows up underneath it, right click, rename, center, and then we have this ribbon. I think I'm going to put, I think this one goes first. So I'm going to grab it and kind of rotate. I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to hover it over back ribbon so that they change their order. Great. So let's make sure we have it all. The background will stitch first, then the bunny, then the left leaf, then the right leaf, then the flower, and then the center of the flower, the back ribbon, and the front ribbon. And that looks great. Okay. Now what you have to do is control A and make sure Everything is highlighted, including this artwork black up here. You want to make sure everything is highlighted, and then you want to go to Tools, Convert to Applique. Voila, it is done. And it defaults to a satin stitch. And I want to do a blanket stitch. Up here in the uh, Properties, over here in the Properties window, I'm just going to hit uh, Blanket and click apply. Now everything is in a clean blanket stitch and it looks beautiful. So essentially what you have is each piece you can click on it and there you know you're working with the background piece because we named it background and there is a little plus sign over here and in the background you have essentially that's your placement stitch, there's your tack down stitch, and there is your blanket stitch. And all of them will have those three stitches in them. If you feel like these stitches here on this particular piece of the ribbon are too long, because it's a pretty tiny piece of material, then we can come over here to the ribbon. You can click on back ribbon, and I'm going to change the stitch length to... 1.0 and the width to 2.0 and click apply. And see how it they went smaller and it just looks better. So I'm going to minimize this and I, I want to do the front ribbon. And I did uh, 1.0 and 2.5 and apply. And that just looks so much better because that is such a, a smaller piece. You would naturally turn those stitch lengths, uh, you would change the stitch properties on your machine anyway. I think this looks really good. I think it's going to stitch out beautifully. So now I need to save it. And I'm just going to come up here to the top and click Save As. And it defaults to Paste Setter Outline Files BRF. I'm going to get out of my Kimberbell embroidery and go back to my Pat Sloan and the bunny pillow. And I'm going to change this to Brother PES V10 and I'm going to call it Bunny Pillow. And it's going to save as a PES format. It says the design does not fit in the hoop. Do you still want to continue? Yes, because I didn't tell it to use a hoop. I am going to put this into the 
the big 10 by 16 hoop for the Brother Luminaire. One of the things I forgot to do in the beginning was to make sure this is going to fit in the hoop. Up here in the main menu from the Home tab, there is a button called Hoop, and I'm going to hit the drop-down arrow and choose Select Hoop. And then I want to make sure I'm using my XP2 10 by 16, which is the Brother Luminaire. But you can choose all kinds of different hoops and you can make your own if you do not find yours in here. So any hoop that is used by any kind of embroidery machine can be added. You can hit the drop down here and choose your machine's file format for hoops. So I want the 10 by 16. I'm going to click apply and click OK, and there it is. So I know now that this is going to fit in the hoop. You can control A for all, and you can arrange, and you can center in the hoop, which it is already. So it's good to go. If you don't have a big hoop to be able to do this as an embroidery file, you can do the background manually. And so you would take this piece right here and just delete it. But then you would be able to stitch down all of the the bunny and the ribbon and the flower and all that using your embroidery machine. And you can do rehoopings if you have a smaller machine. I'm not going to set any stitch colors in this because I will set all that up on the machine while I'm there. Now I'm going to go stitch it out on my machine. I'm going to cheat and I have opened up in Brilliance Essentials. You don't have to do this, but I want to use the wireless capability to send the design to my Luminaire. So I've opened up Essentials and this is the 10 by 16 hoop. And I'm just going to open my folder, go to Bunny Pillow, drag the design in. I'm going to highlight it, rotate 90. There we go. That is all done. And I'm going to say Utility. Send to Solaris XP1. I'm going to call it Bunny Pillow and tell it OK. File sent to the machine. All done. I'm going to sit down so I don't cut off the top of my head. <laughs> All right, I have made up the panel for the pillow with some adorable Benertex fabrics. I have backed the fabric with some iron-on poly mesh. It's not real heavy, it's nice and soft, and it will just give the fabric just kind of enough body that we shouldn't have really any kind of puckering or anything like that. The blanket stitch is very lightweight, and it's not like it's a heavy satin stitch. If I was using a heavy satin stitch on this lightweight quilting cotton, I would probably back it with a cutaway. But because it is lightweight, I am just using an iron-on poly mesh. And one of the things I've done with this hoop is to hoop it with tearaway. This is a paper tearaway and I have taken a magic marker. It's a friction marker, so it will iron away with heat for any of it that's left on, but I'm gonna tear most of it off. All it is is just a, a base so that I can put this into the hoop. I'm going to do what's called floating it. And floating it means I'm not going to actually hoop it in between both layers of the hoop because I don't wanna get any what they call hoop burn on the pillow. Let me get up close so you can see the fabric. Just some adorable Easter prints, and they are directional. So I have a cute little bunny up here in the corner, and here's a little sheep, a little lamb. And I've tried to make everything, like there's a little chicken, a little peep down there, a little chick. And then I've got another bunny down here. I'm going to use the vertical center seam and the horizontal center seam to center it in the hoop. The hoop is actually going to be like this with the hoop uh, arm right here that goes in the machine on my left. And I want to make sure that the bunny is going to fit just right. And I want to get the orientation of the fabric. So I'm paying attention to all of that. And I don't really need to specifically worry about where to put 
the background right now because the placement stitch will tell me how to do that. But I am going to kind of fold this in half on the center seam and get it on that line and just fold it over. And then I'm going to put this center seam on and this center seam on this line. And that way I know this is centered pretty much in the hoop. I can take my design and put it right here. And now I know that I can pin this back pillow part onto the tear away and it will not, uh, my pins will not be hit by the needle at all. This is a really easy way to do this. I sent the design over wirelessly to the Luminaire and we are ready to go. I'm using a brand new thread from Sweet Pea that just came on the market. Sweet Pea is an embroidery company out of Australia. I got this box called Brights and it's just as cute as can be. Doesn't it look like a box of Easter eggs? And it is a 40 weight. It's called Increda Thread. It will not shrink on high heat and it is meant to be used in your embroidery and your sewing machine. So I just love these colors. They're so rich and pretty because the pillow background is very busy and I've used solids. I have chosen shades of thread that are just a little bit darker than the pieces themselves with the exception of the white, of course. And I think that'll make the pieces pop. I think that'll look real good. Okay, so we're ready for the magic. This makes it all worthwhile. I'm gonna thread my machine. I have that pretty blue in there to do the background. I'm gonna go to embroidery and I'm gonna hit the pocket for memory. I'm gonna hit the wireless symbols because I sent it over here wirelessly and let's find it. Oh, there's Pat's pumpkin. I was playing with that too, right there. I think that'll work. We're all done. I don't have to do anything to it. I'm gonna hit embroidery and we are ready to go. This is the placement line for the background fabric. Since this piece is so large, I'm going to remove the hoop and take it to my ironing station to apply the fabric. Because I have ironed it down, I'm going to skip the tack down stitch. I don't need to do that, so I'm going to hit the needle plus minus button and jump ahead one thread and we're ready to do the blanket stitch. Oh, this makes it all worthwhile. And I need to do a thread color change to stitch for the bunny. Here's the placement stitch for the bunny. And I'm going to take my little, I have a ironing pad, and I'm just going to put it underneath, and I'm going to put the ribbons on top so I don't forget that it's under there. And I'm going to take my bunny and just put him in the outline where he goes. This is the easiest way to do this. Okay, and I have my favorite little 
Cricut Easy Press Mini Iron. I love this thing. This is so fun. Because I've ironed him down, I'm going to skip the next stitch. Ready to do the blanket stitch. Oh my goodness, that looks good. Look at that. Around those corners, look at that. <laughs> Love this. And remember, we shorten the stitches. Awesome, it's done. How easy that was. Oh, I love this. It's adorable. My bunny is all finished. Now I just need to add on the sides and get him into the pillow.